Hello, my name is Varalika Mahajan and I'm currently pursuing Masters in Data Science at Columbia University in the city of New York. I'm also a graduate assistant at Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. So in today's video, we are going to talk about data clustering, the most foremost used data clustering algorithm, which is k-means, and how do we evaluate that algorithm. So in precise, these will be the contents of our lecture today. And to begin with, we'll first understand what is clustering. So the basic idea of clustering is to find an organization of data objects so that the similar objects are placed into one group and the dissimilar objects are placed into another group. It is usually modeled as an optimization problem where the intra-cluster distance is min uh, are to be minimized. That means that the cluster need to be highly cohesive. And the inter-cluster difference, which is the distance between two clusters over here, you can see that needs to be maximized so that different clusters are very well separated and the objects within one cluster are very close to each other. Okay, so clustering is basically unsupervised learning where we don't know the classification of the objects. So uh, there is no target variable, no Y uh, variable. We just have X objects and we don't know what we don't know the classification of them into Y. So no need of a training set and no ground of truth to guide the learning process. Like for the eight data objects in the figure given over here, there are multiple clustering results we can assume based on different number of clusters. For example, over here, if you see, for k is equal to two, we can divide them like this into two clusters. However, for k is equal to three, you might be able to segregate the uh, this uh, above cluster further into this. And as you uh, go on increasing the num value of k, you can make smaller clusters with lesser objects and keep max uh, try to maximizing the in uh, distance between two clusters. So why do we use clustering? Clustering is typically used for exploratory data analysis as the clustering results can help to understand the underlying structure organization of the data objects. It can also be used to perform data processing to aggregate the similar objects together using the center point of each cluster and represent, it, uh, represent the entire cluster as a whole. This can reduce the analysis complexity as well as deal with the noises of data. So an, uh, one common exa uh, example of this is market segmentation, which is to subdivide a market into distinct subsets of com uh, customers where any subset may conceivably be selected as a market target to be reached with a distance, a distant market mix. It finds many applications. This is one Im important example used in the industry. So now what are the different types of clustering techniques? So uh, majorly there are two types of clustering techniques, which is partitional clustering and hierarchical clustering. Now, what are these? In uh, partitional clustering, there is no overlap between clusters. A data object belongs to one, and only one cluster. As you can see over here, each data object just belongs to one cluster. However, in hierarchical clustering, clusters are nested. Like in this example over here, which you can see, the data objects of a cluster such as P2, as you can see here, also belong to the upper level cluster, which is P4. The result of hierarchical clustering can also be translated into a partitional clustering by performing a horizontal projection into hierarchical structure. So uh, hierarchical clustering is basically when one cluster coexists in, in another cluster. However, it can be separated by using a, a horizontal line and can be changed into partitional clustering. We, uh, most commonly, k-means uses partitional clustering. So now what is the k-means algorithm? K-means algorithm is one of the most widely used partitional clustering approach. It is very simple and efficient, which is why it is the most common choice. So what we do uh, in k-means algorithm, there's a simple input, which is a collection of data records and the number of clusters k. Initially, we randomly choose the K points as initial centroids. So suppose our K is equal to two. So we'll just pick up two points as centroids. We'll generate K clusters by assigning all points to the closest centroid. Now we use the Euclidean distance to calculate uh, 
distance of each of the object from the centroids we have chosen and whichever uh, centroid is closer we assign that object to that cluster and we keep uh, and after uh, each object is assigned to a cluster we re-update the value of centroids we recalculate it by taking the average of uh, all the points in that cluster and we keep repeating the same procedure until the centroids don't update so let us understand this better with an example. So over here, you can see there are four data, uh, the four points with their attribute values, and we need to cluster them into two clusters. So we have A, B, C, D. So initially, let's just pick A and B as our centroids, which is 1, 1 and 2, 1. Right now in iteration one, we calculate the distance. Obviously, A is the closest to, uh, since we've chosen it as our centroid, it will go in the first cluster. B will go into second cluster. Now, what about C? We calculate the distance of C from A, which uh, and then again, the system, uh, distance of C with B. And whichever is the lower value, we put it in that cluster. Similarly, we do it for D and we assign it to uh, the respective cluster now after we have done this we recompute the centroids now how is this done so over here you can see in the first cluster initially we got only a or b c d all went to the second cluster so a uh, we take the average it will again come out to be one one however for the second cluster since b c d both are present here so what we do uh b uh x for the x coordinate two plus four plus five which is 11 divided by 3. Similarly, for y coordinate, 1 plus 3 plus 4, which is 8 divided by 3. So we now we get our new clusters. Now we do the same process again. We calculate the Euclidean distance of A from cluster 1 and cluster 2. Whichever is the minimum value, we assign it to that cluster. Again, now the clusters re-update. Uh, in cluster 1, we get A, B. In cluster 2, we get C, D. So we recompute our centroids, and this time we get 1.5, 1.5. 4.5, 3.5, and we do another iteration. However, in the third iteration, the centroids do not update. A and B still fall in the uh, first cluster, and C and D still fall in the second cluster. This means our process ends over here, and we have achieved a fly in a clustering, which is highly cohesive and very well separated, as you can see in the figure itself. Right, so this is roughly how k-means work. And to execute it using Python, we need to, uh, we just uh, import the k-means package from sklearn.cluster. We just need to specify the number of clusters we want and initialize it uh, randomly with uh, other variables are optional, but uh, giving the number of clusters is compulsory. Then we just call dot fit and then predict the features and it will classify it. So over here, you can see we have printed three things, print labels, where it prints uh, in which cluster, which objects belong, like 0, 1, 2. Uh, K means or cluster centers prints the, uh, the centroid values uh, calculated in each iteration. Whereas uh, k means dot n iter shows how many iterations were required to get our final clustering. So this is about how you execute it in Python. It's pretty simple. And now you can see in this uh, image how each iteration, we got different clustering. The figure above show how the clustering result changes and how the centroid change their position during each iteration. So as you know, in the above, the fifth iteration was follow uh, final one. This is iteration number one, iteration two. You see the movement of object initially green was so less, it increased. And uh, finally, we get our final iteration with uh, uh, very well separated clusters, which we can distinguishly identify each object. Pre-processing for k-means. So every machine learning algorithm requires pre-processing. As k-means is a distance-based uh, algorithm and all the objects in the data set, uh, data set are considered, k-means clustering result is sensitive to outliers as the location of the centroid will be affected by the location of the outliers. Since we're taking mean as a centroid, if there's an outlier that can highly affect the value of the centroid and thus the whole clustering algorithm can be affected. Meanwhile, k-means can also be used to detect outliers. If a cluster is too far from other clusters and contains a very small number of objects that suggest the objects in that clusters are noises. So uh, using this, we can also see if we want to remove a subset of data. 
K means is a sensitive distance, uh, is sensitive to distance metrics. For example, if we use Euclidean distance, we should standardize the data first to ensure that all the values of the attribute have the similar scale. The scale of the data is very important. If we are uh, using different scales for different data points, the distance will vary and the clustering will be incorrect. So these are the two uh, primary pre-processing points. Now, once we have completed our clustering and we have our clusters, how to evaluate the result? Now, there are two ways to evaluate. One is the external index. Second is the internal index. Now, what are these? Using, intern uh, using external index, uh, which is ground truth, to evaluate the quality of clustering result is considered as a supervised approach. In this case, the clustering result is usually verified by the labels of data objects, where the assumption is that the objects with the same label are similar and should be assigned to the same cluster. So when we have a target variable, we already know the ground truth, and then we use clustering, and then we match the data to see how much accuracy we'll be able to achieve. That is external index. However, internal index, when we do not have a target variable, we do not have a ground of truth. It is an unsupervised method. It evaluates the quality of clustering results based on its structure i.e. whether the structure are highly cohesive and well separated from each other or not, which is the definition of a good clustering. Now, how do you calculate the two? External index, which is uh, calculated at the adjusted RAND index, ARI. What is this? RI is basically uh, the measure, it measures the similarity of two assignments, clustering labels and true labels and it ignores the permutation. So over here, you can see the fa uh, formula for RI, which is further, uh, we do adjusting in it to get the ARI formula over here. And now what? how do you evaluate this? The higher this value, the better it is. A perfect labeling score is one, which means that our clustering labels were same as the target labels. That's why we received the accuracy as one. Similarly, uh, we have another method, which is the adjusted mutual information. I would like to go back and tell you, you can also do it evaluated using Python's by directly calling the metrics uh, uh, library from sklearn and calling metrics.adjusted ran score and it will tell you the score for your clustering. Okay, the second method was adjusted mutual information, AMI. Now, what is this? MI basically measures the agreement of the two assignments by computing the entropy. Now, this one uses entropy. Again, however, the fundamentals uh, one are the same. Perfect labeling score is one, and we this can help us to identify a good fit for an unbalanced clustered data. Over here, you can see. Similarly, we can call metrics dot adjusted mutual info score and uh, our clustering labels and the original labels, which are the ground of truth, and we'll get the score over here. Okay. So this was about uh, external index when we know the ground of truth. What about when we don't know the ground of truth? Then we use internal index. What? How is that calculated? Based on two parameters, cohesion and separation. Cohesion is basically the measure of how closely objects are related in a cluster. Now for this, we use sum of squares error, SSE, which is calculated by the formula given below. And for separation, which is the measure of how distinct or well separated different clusters are from the other, we calculate the between cluster sum of squares using the formula given here, where C is the size of cluster I. Okay, so now let's uh, see how it works in real example. So an interesting thing about is the sum, no matter how many clusters you create, the summation of the BSS plus WSS will always be constant. Let's see in this example. So over here, you can see if we consider K is equal to one, then all the four objects M1, uh, uh, all the four objects will be in the same cluster and M will be our centroid over here. You can see M, which is our centroid. And for this, if I calculate the SSE, it comes out to be 10, which is nothing but w, uh, WSS, one minus three square plus two minus three square plus four minus three square plus five minus three square. And we get 10 over here. Now, if I calculate the BSS, it will be four, which is the uh, number of, now, uh, 4 into 3 minus 3 square, which is equal to 0. 
So if you add the two, you get 10. Now let us see for the case of two cluster. The first two objects are in the first cluster and the last two objects are in the second cluster. For this as well, as we calculate the SSC and BSS using the formula given in the previous slide, you simply just put in the values and you'll get the answer. You see the SSC comes out to be one, BSS come out, comes out to be nine and the total is still 10. So in either case, they have the same sum of BSS and WSSS. So uh, till, uh, this is one verification point how that your k-means algorithm is working well. Another interesting index or coefficient which you can calculate to evaluate your algorithm is the Silhout coefficient. It is a coefficient that combines both SSE and BSS, so you won't have to compute two things. This can also be called out by the SKLearn library metrics. You can use metrics.sellout.score and it will give you the score for your um, clustering. So how is this calculated? It uses a simple formula of B minus A upon max of AB. Now what is A and B? A is the average distance of I points to the, uh, to the points in its cluster and B is the minimum of the average distance of I two points in another cluster. So this also uh, ranges between zero to one as our previous uh, indexes and closer to one, the better one as a value represents perfect clustering. Okay. So now the last question which is left to answer is we know how to do clustering, we know how to evaluate it, but how do you choose the number of cluster? What is the optimal value of K? So for this, we use a simple method known as the elbow method, wherein you uh, take different values of K and calculate the SSE and plot it. Over here, you can see, uh, we so we have computed we have been computing the SSE for each clustering result and then choosing the point of inflection of the curve. So uh, you can see over here in this curve, where do you think the graph inflects? Over here at three, the graph has been falling, and from there it has been uh, somehow flat. So what do you think is the uh, like uh, perfect number of cluster? In this case, this is the elbow point at value equal to three. So for this given data, if we uh, make, create three clusters, it will be the most optimal. What is another approach to do the above? However, the first approach is basic and well uh, understood. However, if you need a more accurate number, another approach of finding the optimal K is to leverage both SSE and sellout coefficient. In this figure, we plot in, uh, in the same figure regardless their different scales. Although K is equal to 11 is the elbow point, which you can see over here, K is equal to 6 also seem uh, to be another good option as the SC score is higher the, and the difference in SSC is not significant. So you need to see the points where the difference is SSC is not significant and the SC score, which is the sell out coefficient should be higher. So over here, we identified two such points, which is K is equal to six and K is equal to 11. However, it is obviously more optimal to take a smaller value of K, making it a little easier to cluster them. So we can, but however, it is completely flexible and you can choose either of them. Uh, well, this is about clustering. So today we learned clustering, K means algorithm, what is the optimal value of K, how to evaluate your clustering results. Thank you so much.